Hey MATLAB jockeys, it's good to be back with you. And in today's lesson, I'd like to show you how to solve matrix problems in MATLAB. Now, this is the core of what MATLAB was originally designed for a long time ago. It originally stood for Matrix Laboratory. And so it's very good at it. And I'm going to be able to show you how to work a matrix equation, a system of linear equations, and how to draw a picture of the answer. Now, we're going to need some place to start. So I made up this little problem. Now, does this have any physical significance now? It doesn't. This is just a, a mathematical problem. But there are lots and lots and lots of analyses in the world that do result in systems of linear equations. And those really are important to solve. Those tell us something meaningful. It's like a finite element model is usually written out in systems of linear equations. And that's a, so that's a very, very useful, very practical thing to do here. Well, this is how you write the equations down in sort of algebraic form. In math, in uh, matrix form, we would write it down this way. 1, 2, minus 1. Those are the coefficients in front of those variables. And you notice the variables always appear in the same order. That's really important. You have to go x, y, z. And, and whatever order I use in the first one, I have to use in all of them, or I'm going to get the wrong answer. So 1, 1, minus 1. Now, we don't put the 1 there and there and there because it's not needed. But it's really there. That's actually 1 times x, 1 times y, minus 1 times z. And so in order to go from here to here, we put the 1, the 1, the minus 1. So 1, minus 1, and 1. OK. Let's get that. Fix that. x, y, z. And I have to get that to equal something, 1, 2, 0. So move my dog here. Uh, 1, 2, 0. And I'll get out of your way here in a second. There. That's how you write that problem out in matrix form. For, for right now, for, uh, so far, matrix form really is just sort of a uh, notational thing. It's much more than that. Linear algebra is a whole field of study in mathematics. But all you need to understand right now is this and this are the same thing. 1, 2, 0, or right there, 1, 2, 0. And all these coefficients right here appear in that matrix. So it's a matrix, a vector, and a vector. Now, one of the big ideas of matrix algebra is I can write out this matrix equation like that. I'm going to call that matrix A, and I'm going to call that vector B. It's very typical to, to uh, call your uh, list of uh, variables you're trying to solve. It's very common to call that x. Now, I know x appears in there. But this is a level of generality and an abstraction. I'm going to just use this letter x to stand for that whole list of uh, variables there. And the way you solve this, if those were just numbers, let's, let's do the scalar version of this. I'll do that over here. Scalar means just numbers. If I have ax equal b, the way I solve that is a or x equals b over a. Okay, duh, if this is 2x equal 1, well, 1 over 2, x is going to be a half. So matrix, you do almost the same thing with one very small notational change. If ax equals b, and these, this is a square matrix, and that's a vector. The vector has the same length as that does. It has the same number of rows. And this has the same number of columns and the same number of rows. It's square. You write it out this way. The inverse of a times b. Okay? And that's kind of a notational thing. I suppose they could have written it out that way. When we talk about matrix inverses, that's what we're trying to do. Okay? Now, there's one hitch here, a couple really, but the one where we care about is you know how it's impossible to divide by 0? That's undefined. If a is 0, this doesn't work. Okay? That a must be non zero. Here, okay, we have to do the matrix equivalent of that being non zero. That's what's called non singular. A singular matrix cannot be inverted. The singular matrix is kind of like trying, trying to invert a singular matrix is kind of like trying to divide by zero. It's, it's not possible. Okay, So that matrix has to be non-singular. And I will show you how to do this in MATLAB. Now, there's, there's uh, row operations you can do to solve this by hand. Um, we'll do that in another video or something. This is really a MATLAB video. The, one, the, the big, big, big idea that I want you to, to take away from this, if you can, is see that? AX equals B. 
That's true no matter how big this problem is. I have it written out as a 3x3 three three problem because I need something small enough to go on the board and also because I want to show you what it's going to look like in three dimensions. Now, I don't know about you, I live in three dimensional space, I don't know how to live in four dimensional space, I don't know how to draw you a four dimensional picture. Okay? I, mathematically there's no problem, just visually how do I do it, I don't know. So I've got a three dimensional problem here. This is true no matter what the dimension is. This is true, that means this is true and this is true, it works the same way no matter how big the matrices are. Finite element models routinely generate uh, matrices that are a million by a million elements, okay? So it's 10 to the 6th the rows and 10 to the 6th columns. At least in principle you would have 10 to the 12th, a trillion numbers in your matrix. And the thing is, even though it has a trillion elements and you couldn't begin to write all those down, it still gets treated this way. It still acts just like that. That's part of the power of matrix algebra. That's part of the power of thinking about the problem this way. So with that in hand, let's go over to my computer. Okay, here we are in MATLAB, and now let's walk through the solution in two steps. First step, let's draw a picture of the solution. Let's see what it looks like so we can see what it means to try to solve a system of linear equations in multiple dimensions. And then we'll use the, mat the matrix capabilities in MATLAB to calculate the solution directly. So I'm going to go ahead and use uh, anonymous functions here. I typed these in earlier, so I'm going to just recall this. Right there is the equation I wrote before solved for z. So z1 equals that. That's the first of the three equations. z2 is right there. That's the second of the two um, sub three matrix equations solved for z. And z3 I typed in before. There's the third of the equations solved for z. Just to reiterate, the first equation, or the I'm sorry, the third equation was x minus y plus z equals 0. So that means z equals y minus x. That's why it looks like that. Now, I want to draw pictures of these. Well, if I have functions, and these are functions, not lists of numbers, I can do these using EasySurf. And I'm going to go ahead and start with z1. And instead of just letting it default, I'm going to use this plot range. I'm going to go from minus 2 to 2. Okay, and there's, there's the first surface. And you can see it calculated quite a few points to make that surface. It didn't need to, but it doesn't really know what I want, so it, it's, it's estimating. Let's do one other thing here. Let's, there. Let's make it so that we can see the plot develop as we put things on it. Now I want to put the second surface on this as well. By the way, you can see that this is a flat plane. Okay, that's a flat, not just a plane, when I look at it from the side like that. And that's what linear equations look like. They're flat surfaces in space. So let's recall that command, and now we'll, oh, before we do it though, I have to tell MATLAB that I want to put another element on that plot. So I'm, the command is hold, and I'm going to turn the hold on. Okay? It sounds like, hold on, I'm going to put some more stuff on this. I'm going to hit the up arrow once and twice to get recall that easy surf command and put a 2 there. So there's that. Let's recall the command again and put a 3 there. So there we go. I've got this. Now, let's see if we can find, maybe nail down where that solution is. You can see that I've got three surfaces here, but they're kind of hard to look at. Now, I could make these surfaces all different colors. That's certainly possible. The easiest thing to do here in the, in the plot editor, or an, an easy thing to do, is I'm going to double click on one surface. For some reason, it put it over there. Let's get that back. And let's make the uh, edges white instead of black on that one surface. And on this other one, let's make them some other color, maybe red there close that and now it's pretty easy to see which one is which turn that off and now I want to rotate them so if I rotate there you can see that right there that point right there is where all three surfaces cross at whatever that X and Y location is all three surfaces are defined right there at that same Z that means all three surfaces cross there that means that XYZ point in space solves all three of those equations 
Let's do one more thing here. Let's rotate this flat. Let's look at it from the very top. Okay, now I'm looking down at the uh, xy plane. I'm looking in the negative z direction. And you can see the answer is right there. It's x equals 1 and y equals minus 1. So if we go ahead and use the uh, matrix commands in MATLAB, we should get x equals 1 and y equals minus 1. I don't know what z is. All right, so let's clear this. Clear the screen, I should say. Actually, let's clear the workspace, too. We don't need it anymore. Now, to enter a command, a matrix, what I can do is I'm going to call the matrix A. So A equals, okay, left square brace, and I'm going to write out the first row of my matrix, which is 1, 2, minus 1. So 1, comma, 2, comma, minus 1. Elements in a row are separated by commas. Rows are separated by semicolons. So the second row is 1, 1, minus 1. And the third row is 1, minus 1, 1. Now, hit return, and let's just double check and make sure that's right. Looks like it is. Next thing I need is that vector b. So I'm going to say b equals. Now, there's only one element per row, so each of my elements are going to be separated by a semicolon. So it's 1, 2, 0. Hit return, 1, 2, 0. OK, that's good. Now to find the solution, I can say inverse of a, i and v is the inverse command, times b. Just hit return, and there it is. x is 1, y is minus 1, and z is minus 2. So we just wrote down a system of three linear equations, solved them graphically, showed where the solution was, and then solved them using the matrix capabilities in MATLAB. Hope this helps, and we'll talk to you next time.